What's going on YouTube? Hello ninja nerds. Um, it's Juliana Holmes coming back at you with something a little different today. I'm going to call this Black Belt Rants. Um, Black Belt Rants about personal history, martial arts philosophy, and internet trolls. How about that for a title? <laughs> um, my background, first of all. So uh, I am um, a child of the 80s. You know, I'm not ashamed of my age. I think you should age gracefully, right? I'm a middle-aged woman. And um, I, I first started training, I first set foot into a karate dojo in 1990. I distinctly remember because that was the year that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie came out and my parents took me to the theater to see it. And I, without their knowledge, uh, went over and filled out a little form. A local martial arts studio had put a lead box in the movie theater and win a month of free karate. Okay, that's like, bet. So without my parents' knowledge or permission, don't try this at home, kids, um, I entered my information and I got, um, and now if you know anything about business and lead boxes, it's, it's, everybody gets free lessons because they're trying to get new members in the door, right? So my parents allowed me to take a month of free karate. Um, unbeknownst to me, it was very expensive. My parents talked to them about continuing. We couldn't afford it. So my parents just told me no. And then it wasn't until 95 when I was actually able to continue training in earnest, um, without getting too much into the weeds of my story. Um, in high school, I trained in Shorinu Karate. In um, my you know late teens, early twenties, I started training in Taekwondo. Earned my eventually my third degree black belt in Taekwondo. In college, I went to Indiana University, and there I trained. I dabbled in a lot of stuff actually. Um, you know, Kali. That was my first introduction to Kali. Jeet Kune Do. Um, I, 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 I think I dropped in on a capoeira class. I dropped in on a kung fu class. I was a teaching assistant in the Taekwondo classes actually. Uh, but it was in, in college at Indiana University that I earned my uh, black belt in Hapkido, as well as became um, a, a pretty serious student of Tai Chi, particularly Yang, Yang style Tai Chi. Um, and that's the, that's the beginning of my ninja nerd status, right? And so I've been around the martial arts for a minute, and I've dabbled in lots of stuff. My, my martial arts journey began, um, I, I had a lot of breadth in the first maybe decade, I, I, maybe even 15 years. I went out like this and I studied as much as I could about a bunch of different stuff. Okay. And then as time went on the last, probably the last decade or so, my, my breadth of, of study and practice has kind of come back into focus. I, I find that that made me, um, it gave me humility because every time I stepped into a new, um, training hall or dojo, dojong, whatever you want to call it, I was humbled. I was, I was, reminded you don't know everything yet because I was a first degree black belt in Taekwondo when I started Hapkido. I was like, oh, I don't know everything yet, right? And then I was a first, I was a second degree in Taekwondo and a first degree in Hapkido when I moved to Texas. And then I was like, oh, I don't know everything yet. So it's been very, I've been very fortunate in that regard. I look at that as a good thing. I always want to be a student. I always want to have that white belt mentality. My credentials, I have a fourth degree black belt in karate. I'm hoping to make that a fifth degree in the near future. Um, a uh, third degree in Taekwondo, second degree in Hapkido. I'm also certified to teach Tai Chi. I'm also certified to teach Arnis, Filipino martial arts. Um, it's been in the last uh, decade or so that I've been really delving into the Filipino martial arts in earnest. Um, it's become a passion of mine. And that kind of brings me to my next point. My, my philosophy of the martial arts and the philosophy in general and my particular take on it. It's in the name, martial art. Okay, two sides of the same coin. That word martial, that is, um, that comes from the god of war, Mars, the Roman god of war. Um, and so it has to do with fighting, combat, warfare, right? Art. Now that one's a little trickier. It can, depending on who you ask, it can mean different things. Bruce Lee was quoted as saying that the martial arts are, you know, the expression of one's true self, right? Um, art form, an art form can be many, it can be thought of as a skill. But beyond that, it can be a means of self-expression. Um, the difference here, martial art, you have the two sides. It's like the yin and the yang, right? The balance of opposites, you know, without getting into whole diatribe about Taoism and the whole thing. Balance. That's the basic idea, right? So combat warfare, pursuit of, of you know, the perfection of one's character and, um, you know, a self-expression, right? The, the jitsu versus do that suffix on each right you have judo jujitsu karate do karate jitsu all right there are martial arts that refer to themselves as karate jitsu all right um do means the way 
Okay, it actually comes from Tao, the Tao, okay, the way, the way of life, whatever, okay. Um, and then Jitsu means art or skill, right? So the classical distinction is the, the Jitsu arts are skill-based arts that are really meant to teach fighting skills, okay? So you have the samurai arts as, in, as a perfect example, Jujitsu, Kinjitsu, um, Iaijitsu, Kyujitsu, all right, all these things where you have all of those are, you know, jujitsu is the, the art of yielding, which is grappling, which you think of as jujitsu. Um, kinjitsu is the art of the sword. Kyujitsu is the art of the bow. Uh, Iaijitsu is the art of drawing the sword, separate art. And then all of those have a do variation. When they, they became part of the modern Japanese budo, um, it was the Japanese who kind of made it more of it. Well, this is a way of, of perfection of character. This is a way of, of you know, improving your life and so on and so forth. And so that's what the Do arts are really all about, is, is more about perfection of character. Um, with an important caveat, alrighty, um, there, there should be, as I said, balance, the yin and the yang, right? Um, and I think, and I think arguably, arguably in our modern climate, both Jitsus and Do's, <laughs> both sides are both, they both are, do, they both have a balance. They both are a way of life, a way of self-perfection, and also a way of learning self-defense. Now, all of all of these arts have validity based on the goals of the practitioner. Does that make sense? My dad just retired, okay? And he's talked about going to the senior center and taking some Tai Chi classes. Now, he's a third degree black belt in karate, by the way. But he's kind of at the stage in his life where he's done getting hit. He doesn't, that doesn't sound appealing to him. Um, he always loved forms practice and stuff. So he's like, oh, maybe I'll get into some Tai Chi. That'd be cool. You know, that's awesome. It's, it keeps him active. It keeps him healthy. It's, it's a new, it, it keeps him mentally engaged. Great. Perfect. A balanced martial art should have three elements. Okay. Art, self-defense, and sport. Okay. Those are the three elements that create a balanced martial art. If you're training in a martial art, um, especially if your goal initially is to learn to defend yourself, then yes, you need to find a martial art that will facilitate that. However, those of us who are, martial, who are lifelong martial artists, we do not stick around training day after day, week after week, year after year, because we're paranoid about getting into a street fight. I mean, if you are, if that's you, you, you might need to do some self-reflection and, and maybe talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? Are you good? Um, you know, it's a balance. I believe the martial arts are for everyone. That's been my theme lately. That's becoming a part of my ingrained martial arts philosophy. Everybody deserves the benefits of martial arts. Everybody can get something different out of the martial arts. Um, I do want to talk about internet trolls, <laughs> so on and so forth. Um, I've been getting a lot of pushback. I've, I've only been really back on social media um, for like a month, month and a half in 20, like 15, 2016 during the elections and all that stuff. Right. And again, not a political channel, but I had Facebook and everything like that. And I just quickly noticed how toxic everything was getting. So at the behest of my brother-in-law, um, he said, you know, you should just delete all your socials. It's, it's, you'll be happier. And they are correct. By the way, for close to a decade now, I have not had uh, I, I kept the Instagram account just because I wanted to keep my name on there, but I had not posted for years. Um, I deleted my Facebook, deleted my Twitter, all that jazz. Never had a TikTok until recently. Um, and I was much happier for it. The moment I got back on social media and started dealing with the, the uh, hostility, the negativity, it, it was a shock. But, you know, I'm all about positivity, guys. I, I like to smile. I like to laugh. I, I like to enjoy martial arts. I'm on here to spread my love and my passion and my enjoyment of martial arts. I'm not, I'm not on here to, to have flame wars in the, in the comment section. So I saw a comment about, you must not know anything about martial arts because you don't know who Wei Li Zhang is. She's like the Chinese, you know, champion, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You don't know anything about martial arts because you're saying capoeira is a good martial art. You know? <laughs> okay. So, whoa. First of all, I've already explained, we have a slightly different perspective on what a martial, what purpose a martial art serves, and therefore what makes a good martial art. We just have a difference of opinion, okay? Um, as far as me not knowing much about MMA, um, guys, as I told you, I'm old. I fully admit that. 
first one to admit it. Um, back in the day when I had a subscription to Black Belt Magazine, and for all you younger Gen Z viewers, um, a, a magazine subscription is when you would pay a couple of bucks and then the, a physical print magazine would be mailed to your house every month. <laughs> okay. And I used to have a subscription to Black Belt. So in the early days of the UFC, because I started training in the 90s, right? So in the early, early days of the UFC, I was reading articles about it and stuff like that. And so that was like my, so I was aware of it from the jump. And I had, I had, I had a cursory knowledge of it, but you know, there's been many points in my adult life where I've not had cable. Actually, I don't have cable now. I have streaming, um, don't have cable. And on top of that, um, I'm not a sports watcher. It's not, that's never really been my, my vibe. Um, I do have a couple of sports that I can tune into and enjoy. Those are the sports that I understand. So yeah, if you turn on the UFC, if I'm hanging out, with people and they turn on a UFC fight, I will be able to get enjoyment out of it because I understand the concepts of, of what's going on. To me, it is more than just two guys bashing each other's faces and it is, there is art to it. And so I can totally appreciate that, right? Um, but I don't follow it closely. I don't pay for UFC fight pass or anything like that. I man, times are tough, bro. I ain't got that kind of money to be subscribing to everything, <laughs> you know? So I, you know, I don't follow it that closely. Um, I have been doing martial arts consistently, training and teaching for over 20 years. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I can, I can ask you, you know, if somebody's like, oh, you don't know who Wailing Zhang is? You don't know nothing. Okay. And I, I wrote this down, right? Um, I, I, you know, traditional karate, taekwondo, hapkido, right? Do you know who Kunsan Ku is? Do you know Gichin Funakoshi, Giko Funakoshi? Do you know Wang Guk Lee, Wang Fei Hong? Do you know Jun Ri, Choi Hung Hai, Yong Sung Kong? If you can, you know, rattle off who those people are without even Google, okay, then, yeah, cool. But my point is this. I'm not trying to rag on people. What I'm trying to say is the martial arts are a very deep subject matter, and there's many different facets that you can be involved in. Um, just because I don't know the latest MMA fighters, that doesn't mean I know nothing, okay? Um, and uh, it's kind of foolhardy to think so. Um, um, I don't, I don't ever discount anybody's experience. I don't ever discount, you know, what you may know, what you may not know, just because, just by looking at you. And I, and I would like the same courtesy, right? I know I'm a middle-aged woman. I probably look like a, more like a soccer mom than I do a, a karate fighter, but, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't judge a book by its cover, right? Okay. And that's, that's all about respect. It comes back to respect and courtesy. You see what I'm saying? Um, I do have some credentials behind me. I do, I do know some things about martial arts. I, by the way, I also know that there's a lot of things I don't know about martial arts, right? Um, I just started, I just jumped in on a Muay Thai class recently because it's interesting and it's different and I'm curious and I want to learn and I love being a white belt. I love having that white belt mentality. And I know that I know there's not belts in Muay Thai. Calm down. Um, <laughs> but I like having that student mindset of just dropping, emptying your cup so that another instructor can fill it up and, and educate you. You know, you can't, if you think you know everything already, you, nobody can educate you, right? So I love just being a beginner, being a student, just asking questions, things like that. That's great. That's, I love that. Um, and so this is my YouTube channel. It's about my journey, my, my philosophy, my opinions. Okay. And I believe that martial arts is for everybody. It's training for life. And everybody can glean something out of martial arts training. They really can. So that's, that's another caveat. You know, it's like, you know, martial arts are great. It's, it's about passion. It's about, it's about just it, fulfillment, balance, yin and yang. You also need to know how to defend yourself. And that's why my martial arts journey has brought me way out of breadth of training and different things. And now it's kind of being refocused into two main styles that I teach and train. Karate and Arnis. The Filipino side is much more about, you know, there are, there are lethal force options in Filipino martial arts, right? Um, but still, it is also fulfilling and enjoyable, and I, it's a passion, and it's something that I want to promote for that reason as well. So I think that about wraps it up, guys. That's my, I've, I've ranted long enough. I hope you stuck around this long. If you did, why don't you comment down below what martial arts style you train? So I know you made it to the end of the video, <laughs> okay? Uh, thank you so much, and uh, don't forget to take it. Come on, darling, won't you dance with me? Time is moving on fast.